I'll take this one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to check out a Wildwood Spec Gibson. Now what on earth does that mean? Well, it's a signature Wildwood Guitars. They're located in Colorado. I first became aware of them because of the fantastic videos that they create with Greg Cock, showcasing many of their inventory. What you just saw at the beginning of this episode is actually him playing this exact guitar. But let's go ahead and figure out what makes a Wildwood Spec different. At the first glance, I mean, it looks like any 61 reissue style SG. If you're not familiar, the first full year of the SG body shape is 1961. However, for the first couple of years until 1963, they were still called Les Pauls. So if you're confused why the truss rod cover says Les Paul and not SG, it's because this is a custom shop reissue guitar. However, you'll notice this is a stop bar variety. Most of the original 61s look like this with the sideways vibrola. But historically, those don't stay in tune the best, so so it was very popular for people to modify them with a stop bar tailpiece, so that's why a lot of reissue SG standards come in the desired format. But this particular one was birthed in the year 2014, and it has that really dark aniline dye. So naturally, that means we have some binding bleed on this one. That's where the dyes slowly seep into the binding, giving you this red edge. So what makes these special? The story is actually on the COA. The Wildwood specs have custom selected woods and humbuckers. So that means the guys at Wildwood, they personally hand selected this particular mahogany body blank for this guitar due to things like color, wood grain, and overall weight, as well as for chatoyant effect. You know, this one has a little bit of dancing to it. I mean, it's nothing too crazy, but I personally really dig the back. I think that's why this one got selected. You've got this cool double ringed pattern. There's just a lot of wood grain on this, and that's exactly what you want on an SG, which is a guitar that's typically all mahogany, and you don't find, you know, figured mahogany as often as in the maple family. That doesn't mean you won't find a all maple SG or a maple top or a maple veneer. But then the pickups, they're still custom buckers. They're just wound slightly different. So whether that's slightly hotter or slightly less, we'll find out on the workbench. But if there are anything like the Super 74 pickups, which are underwound custom buckers, I would be pretty happy. But this one's in on consignment. I haven't actually played it yet. So we're going to figure it out together. But besides just the guitar, these came in the standard case of the era. Remember, this one's from 2014. So this is what they were using, just regular Gibson Custom. The Wildwood spec badge is nice. But it's this nice burgundy interior, and we've got all this case candy, including our pre-pack checklist. Dates this one to early 2015, but our serial number dates it to 2014, so it was made late 2014, shipped early 2015. Got your vintage reissue tags. This originally was on the outside of the case. Some other hang tags, talking about bumblebee caps. This was the original tone sticker on the pick guard that's lost its stick and our case key, and of course we can look at this COA again. Interesting that it's just billed as an SG standard, not a particular year reissue. However, it's definitely going more so towards those 61 specs. So if you ever see a guitar advertised as Wildwood spec, usually just means they have their version of the custom buckers in, and maybe the wood will look nicer, maybe not, it all depends on personal preference. But let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench. When I put this one on the workbench, I noticed something else. It did not have the VOS finish treatment to it. So that means no gunk preventing me from polishing this up to a nice, beautiful shine. So this is like back to how it was brand new. Let's unravel the mystery of these pickups. They just seem to be regular custom buckers from the back. They don't have any branding like Wildwood, at least not in 2014. I'm kind of surprised about that. But our readings are 8.03 in the bridge, neck position 7.92 and the middle for fun at about four. So I think those are just a tad underwound. Maybe they changed something else up about them. You know what, let's call them up. Wildwood guitars. Could you tell me what's different about the custom buckers? We have Gibson underwind them a little bit, just more sensitive to how hard and soft you play, and we think more expressive, and we always go for really good clarity too. So well, there we go. Slightly underwound, but I wanted to make sure they weren't changing around magnets or anything. So I'll be curious how that compares to the Super 74. I think those are slightly even more underwound. Here's a look at our neck pickup cavity. You can see our super extra long neck tenon ending right there. And then here's our bridge pickup cavity. No additional markings. But if we can cut through the reflections, you can see some of this gorgeous mahogany wood grain on this one. But I found it very fascinating. As I was cleaning this, the aniline dye has actually seeped through 
the clear coat. My polish is not red. This is not dirt. That has to be the aniline dyes. Now, could that also be the case leaching out into it? Eh, maybe. But it could also be when the guitar was newer, the dyes leached onto the case, and then that's why it was on there. Thankfully, with a red body like this, you would never know it, except for the binding bleed along the edge. Now, for our bridge and tailpiece, we just got a regular ABR1 bridge actually quite heavy. I think the more modern ones are a little bit lighter in weight, but yet we have the lightweight aluminum tailpiece. And everything's normal here. Three-way toggle switch, amber switch tip, two volumes, two tones, one set for each pickup, and your output jack on the front. Here's a look at our pick card. It's got some scratches and swirls, but it's one of those super ultra multiply ones. Looking fancy. But with it installed, this is one of those guitars where you really notice that the 61SG card doesn't follow the contours at all. It's just sticking off the side over here. It's kind of funny, but part of its charm and quirk, I guess. Moving on from our one-piece mahogany body, we've got that mahogany neck with the rosewood fretboard. We've got the frets polished up nicely in the board condition. All of our usual historic stuff here. And one thing to know about a 2014 model is it will have hide glue construction, at least for the neck. And no, this has not been refretted. It does have the very tiny fret nibs on the end. That's the thing to know. Modern Gibson USAs, they have giant fret nibs, but the historic ones are actually very small. I measure a 1.7 inch nut width, increasing to 2.08 by the 12th. 0.84 at the first fret neck depth, and 0.93 at the 12th. Here's a look at that neck on the contour gauge, first fret, 12th fret. As far as SGs go, it's actually a pretty nice rounded C shape, not the skinniest feeling neck I've ever felt. And now moving on to the face of our headstock, this cleaned up nicely, no more dust. We've got the mother of pearl crown and Gibson logo with those vintage style Clusen tuners, single ring. The truss rod is there, and here's the wide bevel edge truss rod cover, reading Les Paul. Now we've got some fresh strings on it, needed a slight truss rod adjustment and lowering the action, and now this thing is playing great. Uh, let's move on over to the backside now. Once again, we've got some beautiful wood grain back here, but as far as our control cavity, the hang tags were not lying. We've got the bumblebee capacitors. You can see some ends that weren't quite cleaned up by the custom shop with our switchcraft output jack and the historic style pots. We've got the original strap button at the base and the other one at the heel and all the beautiful contoured edges of the SG. Now, as far as condition goes on the back here, somebody had a buckle or something because you can see some light worming marks in this area. Thankfully, they're not too deep, but they are there. You also have some of that on your back plate here. But a thing to know about historic SGs, the back of the body actually hugs the back of the neck. So this is not the neck that you're looking at right here. That's actually a continuation of the body. That's why you can see the continuation of our grain and why if you look really closely, the wood grain looks different and is a slightly different red color. we can move up the back side of the neck now. Just some light marks, nothing too crazy. And it looks like we're rocking no-line reissue Clusen style tuners with our serial number of 044762. So this was the 4762nd custom shop guitar produced in 2014. So that also tells us very late in the year. That's a lot of guitars. Wow, that's a good weight. Six pounds, two and a half ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how these special custom buckers sound. First things first, neck dive test. There we go. We finally have a balanced SG. I was scared because sometimes those really lightweight ones are the most divey. But this one, I mean, as you nudge it, it'll fall down. But on this shirt with this strap, this is a neck diveless SG. Let's go ahead and get these tones. <laughs> chimey that middle position is. For me, it's all about that neck and middle position. It's so great. Clear 
without getting too muddy. That's great for a neck. But the bridge? <laughs> It sounds good, but I think with dirt, that's going to come to life. I can see why Greg seemed like he liked playing this one. I agree. It's nice, lightweight, nicely balanced. I do agree that their underwound custom buckers sound good. Maybe not quite as good as the Super 74s in my opinion, but very close. This particular guitar was visiting me on consignment, so if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can find it for sale on my website. I would not hesitate to say this is one of the better custom shop SGs that I've played, and I'm not usually a huge fan of these, so I was kind of worried how this review would do, but yeah. Found out about the Wildwood custom guitars. Now we understand what Wildwood spec typically means. So hopefully that information will help you out there in the wild one day. Don't be scared of the Wildwood spec guitars. All right, Droglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.